coming out of nowhere. It's a bit airy and a bit scary. It's gray and it's murky. And then out of nowhere comes this white striped whale. That is Orkinus orca, the killer of whales, the most widespread predator on this planet. My dream for years has been to swim and interact with killer whales. My ultimate goal would be to have a whale swim up to me, look me in the eyes, bond, and to become part of its world. Just like some people have the urge to climb up high mountains, I have this uh, strong and, and inner desire of swimming with the big animals and to interact with a killer whale that's one of the biggest animals on the, on the planet Earth will, would be the ultimate goal. I want to see if I can trick them into communicating with me and if I can play with them. If I can get the animals up close and feel that they are also interested in, in my appearance in the water. Well now I've got some gloves so I can keep my hands warm. And uh, of course, when we're in this Arctic uh, climate, we have to be careful not to get cold. We hope to find some uh, whales out there today before it gets dark. And we hope that we can swim with some females and some young whales because they, uh, they're more curious and they want, they want to interact more. The big males usually just uh, are not so interested in human encounters. Chasing my dream to dive and interact with the killer whales, I've traveled north of the polar circle. Each year, from November to January, killer whales are arriving at the Tusfjord and Westfjord in Norway, where they come to eat the herring that hide in the 700 meter deep fjords. I am what is known as a free diver. To free dive means that you dive on one breath of air, without scuba tanks, you are simply free in the water. In competition, I can hold my breath for more than 8 minutes, but in these cold arctic waters, I expect to stay below the surface for only 2 to 3 minutes. I am here with my Swedish friend Sebastian Neslund, who is an underwater photographer and also an experienced free diver. Sebastian has been following and filming my underwater adventures for years. This wall looks really nice, Sebastian. Supposedly it's dropping 500 meters straight down to the bottom of the sea. You want to go down and have a look? Yeah. You think we can go down to 30? I think the wall drops all the way straight down, so there's no problem. <laughs> yeah, for the wall, yeah, but for us. I always love being in the water. It's a, a place where your body is weightless and you can say it's like being in outer space because you're flying around in three dimensions and there's nothing up, there's nothing down and gravity does not work like on land, so it's a, it's a free world. I just found some good friends down on the wall here on the rocks and this one has already started sucking onto my glove <laughs> as if we were very good friends, but uh, I'll let them go again now, put them back where they belong. I had, uh, of course, studied a lot about the killer whales before I came to Norway. I had read different articles about their behavior, about the acoustic environment, about how they speak and communicate with each other, but something is reading out of a book, um, but it's a totally different thing to actually go into the water and experience it for yourself. We don't know if killer whales are friendly. We know that there are no reports on attacks on humans, but uh, these are the, the top predators of the sea, and if they want, 
they, they can take you and throw you 15 meters out of the water or slash you with the tail. So in their world, you have to respect the rules. So um, it's very interesting, but um, you have to be curious and, and uh, go and discover for yourself. My biggest challenge in diving with these amazing animals is to find them. To help me find the killer whales, I've teamed up with Australian skipper Jasmine Hunt, who for several years has worked for the Tusfjord Tourist Centre, a company specialising in whale tourism. So you have spotted a whale in that direction? Yeah, I can see a, a large male. But it, it is travelling though, so where it's going I'm not too sure, or yeah. maybe it's searching for food. Yeah, they're very difficult to keep up with when they're travelling. young whale right next to the boat. We have moved out into the West Fjord now. We have traveled for several hours and we're getting ready to jump into the water. Obviously it's uh, impossible to imagine what the, the first encounter will be like. Cold feet! <laughs> but uh, I have an idea that it's something of uh, uh, sensitivity and that, that the whales can, uh, they are respecting me in their environment and I respect them. And uh, hopefully a whale will come up and look me in the eye and we'll have this bond. I think the main thing of uh, being here as a freediver compared to uh, being a scuba diver is obviously the, the freedom of movement in the water. Uh, scuba divers can also stay down for a very long time and, and they can look at the whales but they cannot move in the same way, they cannot spin around and, and uh, of course the whales can also sense that they have this tank on the back and there's something unnatural. Uh, while when you're down as a freediver, they can sense your heartbeat with their sonars, they can register your pulse, they, they don't have any distractions in the element, so they can feel you as you are. And uh, also because you're able to move uh, like they do, uh, I, I believe, I fool myself to believe, uh, I hope that, uh, that I can get closer than, than other people. The whale is coming straight towards the ball now. I'm going down to see if I can get a good look at him. The first thing that um came to my mind, never having seen a killer whale before, was this is a big animal. At two o'clock, three o'clock. You cannot, in your wildest imagination or fantasy, get uh, an idea of how it will be like. But when you're in the front of a whale that weighs four tons and it's staring you right in the eyes, everything stops and you just become breathless. Male, he passed right under me, but he didn't want to play. Incredible. They're looking for herring and they are trying to gather all the herring. So they send out different members of the group. So killer whales go northeast, south and west and they try to communicate and round up the herring and get them into one ball so they can feast. Okay, they're coming now. We try to catch them again, see if we can get a really good shot. I'll try to swim down quite deep and make some noises and some movements and I'm sure they'll pick me up on the radar, on the sonar system. The killer whales have developed a very clean sense of hearing. They can speak with each other more than 20 kilometers apart and they can also hear if there's a prey in an area maybe up to 10 or 15 kilometers away. They use a lot of different sounds and whistles. It sounds almost like birds and uh, they use these for communication between each other and also for uh, communicating with other parts of killer whales that are in an area. 
They're swimming pretty quick. They're very fast. No big luck. Whoa. Huge, huge male. And another one coming towards the boat now. There are two species of killer whales in the world. The first feeds on mammals like seals, dolphins, and even other whales. The second feeds on fish, which is the Norwegian killer whale that I'm diving with here. Ready? There's uh, two on that side and one on that side, so I'll just try and jump in the middle. So this is good enough. The killer whales live close to the surface, and half of the dives do not exceed 12 well, meters. Side, no? However, they can dive deep, and they're known to dive down to more than 300 meters. Okay, we're going in again. It's, there's a big male coming straight ahead of the boat. The fish feeding killer whales live in small pods of 20 to 30 animals. The family structure plays an important role in teaching the young whales the difficult hunting process. It is often the younger males who are sent out to scout for prey and to make the deep dives to scare the herring to the surface. But this whale is out scouting by itself and obviously not interested in my presence. Okay, we have to call it a day. It's getting dark now, so we're forced to heading back to the harbor. And uh, it's been a very exciting day, but obviously not so easy to get in contact and close encounter with the whales. It's uh, their decision, and if they don't want to play, then uh, they don't want to play. It's not even two o'clock, and the sun is already going down. We are up north of the polar circle, and that's why the days are so short. We have a beautiful ship passing by now. They're out enjoying the Norwegian fjords, and the name of the boat is Norderlicht. It actually means a northern light, and uh, this is the phenomenon we see up here in the Arctic. And we saw a little bit of it yesterday, where the where the sky is turning blue and it's turning uh, yellow and a bit uh, green. It's a magnificent sight. Beautiful phenomenon. With only five hours of daylight, I'm happy that I managed to die with some whales. It was a beautiful first encounter, but it wasn't really the interaction I've come here for. However, I have a good feeling, now that the first dive is behind me, that I will get closer to the whales tomorrow. It is only 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but it is almost dark and we dock. It gives me plenty of time to do my yoga session before dinner. Yoga is important to me in my free diving because I uh, find uh, peace within myself. And I uh, also get a lot of flexibility and strength from the exercises, especially in my thorax, my upper body the muscles around the, the lungs that need to be able to inflate and, and compress uh, when I'm diving deep into the ocean. This means that when I go in the water and when I also go deep uh, into the sea and my lungs are collapsing, I also have a better uh, way of getting air to my ears in order to equalize because I can lift the diaphragm. So it helps me in uh, various ways in my free diving. The most important thing for me from yoga is the mental aspect. And when I do a competition in freediving, when I train for a world record or when I do a world record attempt, or when I dive with big animals, in this instance killer whales, of course it's good to have this uh, natural relaxation in your body. You don't want the adrenaline pumping, you don't want your heart rate to skyrocket through the roof, you want to be relaxed in the water and enjoy the moment. And I'm quite sure that the animals can also feel if you're tense or if you're nervous. And there's no need to be nervous because there's nothing you can do anyway. You're in the water with these beautiful animals and, and they're in control of the situation. So you better just uh, relax and, and enjoy the encounter with these animals. I hurry on to the Tushyort Hotel. I don't want to miss the orca ceremony, as I've promised to help them out. Whale ceremony of Orca Tessiord 
So you see that the maps up here, they show where we find the orcas this year. These are the maps from last year, and we started this in 2000. So we kept up the maps, of course, and now we can see the movement of the orcas and of the herring into the fjords from year to year. And today, I will have to ask somebody who will have the great honor to put the mark on the right place. I think I will have to ask somebody who was in the water, not only in the water, but quite deep in the water. Stig, <laughs> could you come forward? Yes. Björn, what do we have to do before we put the mark on? Sing, of course. We have to sing, of course. This is a ceremony. Can everybody please be ready to sing? <coughs> the Tysfjorden Tourist Center is full of nature enthusiasts who are interested in meeting the killer whales in the deep Norwegian fjords. The hotel is a base camp for killer whale safaris. They organize whale spotting trips. They even offer the ordinary tourist the opportunity of snorkeling on the surface. It has its own research center where scientists have worked since 1987, making the findings available to those interested in killer whales. For myself, it is a great opportunity to meet some of these specialists to get some first-hand information from people who have worked with the Norwegian killer whales for years. Do you think there could be a bigger chance of interacting with these animals if you were actually deeper down in the water, free diving and staying down for maybe one or two minutes? Uh, well, at least that would be very interesting to see how they would react on that, because they are, I think at least most of these whales, they are, because this snorkeling has been going on here for over 10 years. Yes. So I think they are quite used to these, these snorkelers being floating on the surface. There hasn't really been on so much free diving. No free divers have actually so tried would, to yeah. get some so interaction. It would be very interesting to see actually that how they are going to react. If they're more curious yes, if there's a free diver exactly. down in the yeah. water instead of just a snorkeler floating on the surface. There are there are individuals and yes. also some of them, especially younger ones, the juveniles, they might be very sometimes they're very fascinated about mm -hmm. humans and they can, they might come very close to the boat and have a look very curious. after few. Yes, they might be very curious. Uh, yes. some of the whales we know better than the others. There's also differences between the different killer whale groups. Uh, some of them, they are more, they are more uh, shy and they try to avoid the boats, but some of them, they like to come quite close and have a look at the people. So some of them, we do know quite well. We see another boat over here with the snorkelers. People are actually gonna be in the surface watching the whales in the water. Before I went up here to Norway, my family and my friends, they were actually a little bit worried that I was going to get into the water with these huge animals. Do you think it's absolutely um, safe to dive with these killer whales here in Norway? We have no reports of any aggressive behavior towards uh, humans or snow killers. Here in Norway, the killer whales, they are, they, their main prey is herring, yes. also mackerel. Um, in, in these areas, there's no reports of killer whales um, eating any marine mammals. No. So, uh, not even seals. Not even seals, no. no because there's enough, enough of the herring. Yes, they are, they are focusing on, on the fish. So it should be absolutely safe. So the, well. <laughs> Nothing is safe. Uh, with we have to consider that they are wild animals. Yes, of course. Yes. But in general. But, but there is no reports of any attacks, yeah, on, attacks humans. on humans, no. <laughs> Today is a fantastic morning. We have clear blue skies and I have a feeling that I'm going to get really close to the whales. Now they must be out there. Maybe the wind uh, has blown in the herring as well. We have this problem. Uh, some of the researchers think that the herring is going either too deep or that they're not e actually in the fjord yet. And of course the killer whales are following the herring to eat them and if there's no herring, we don't have any whales. We can see the sun slightly above the mountains. In a few hours it's gonna be gone again and in nine days it's gonna disappear from the sky and it will not be seen for the next two months.
now we're sailing here along these magnificent walls. The mountains are about a few hundred meters high and below us there's 400 meters to the bottom of the sea. There's a theory called plate tectonic, which is basically an idea that the surface of the earth is moving around. It's floating like icebergs in the big ocean. And uh, one big uh, proof that this idea is uh, actually valid still today is that um, we have the, the continental drift and all the mountains that we see here on the west coast of Norway are found identical on the east coast of Greenland. So originally there was one huge supercontinent that was united and it was called Pangaea. And from then on it moved out in the ocean and all the energy from the core of the earth forced the plates apart. So actually, back in history, many of these mountains were united with the, with the east coast of Greenland. It's quite uh, an interesting thought. We are now scouting for the killer whales. So far there have been no reports of sightings. Uh, we heard this morning that there are a lot of fishing boats, uh, herring fishing boats, out uh, at the end of the West Fjord, which is very near to the Atlantic Ocean. And the waves are simply too big, uh, four to six meters. We cannot travel out in, in a small zodiac like this. So we have to keep looking for the big dorsal fins here in the fjord. A big uh, herring boat here, a big fishing boat that uh, probably just came in from the Atlantic Ocean and uh, we are trying to see if we can communicate with the captain. I'll see him, if I can speak with him in a uh, broken Norwegian. He told us they have a lot of herring on board, they're just waiting uh, on an order where to go and uh, let off the herring. He also told me that I've seen a lot of killer whales out at the end of the fjord in the Atlantic Ocean, but the waves are extremely high, so we cannot go out in a small boat like this. So our only possibility is to wait here in the fjord and hopefully we'll find the whales later in the day. We leave the friendly skipper and go searching for whales. The secret of finding whales is to find the herring. An adult killer whale of four tons eats 100 kilos of herring each day. Our best chance for spotting schools of herring is to look for bird activity. When you see lots of birds, it's because they found lots of fish. Hopefully it will be herring and killer whales. Yep, they have whales. It's very exciting, the whales are sticking right in front of the boat, we hope, huge, we hope it's a carousel feeding where they're hunting together, making noises, sounds, and they're showing the white belling, trying to scare the ball of herring up towards the surface. There's a huge male coming straight towards the boat now, I'll stop talking and get in the water. Woo! Okay, that's it. Sebastian, ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Even though the water is quite clear, as soon as you start diving down, it gets very dark, kind of olive green and dusky. You cannot see what is below, but you know you have 700 meters to the bottom. Of course, it's impossible to imagine what the first encounter with the killer whales will be like. But I hope that it's gonna be on a level with communication, that is, of course, oral, where they make sounds or they make movements and we can get a bit closer and catch each other's attention. But it could also be on a more physical level. Maybe I can get in close range or maybe touch them or they will touch me. Maybe not bump into me but maybe they'll touch my fins or maybe they'll swim into me gently. I don't know, you have all these ideas. I don't think it's wrong to touch animals if they let you approach them.
there was a big killer whale just a few feet in front of me. He was definitely checking me out and I was able to hear his clicking sound. <laughs> Going down again. We have to remember that these animals are localizing the environment by sounds using echolocation. They strike an object with the clicks and the echo is reflected back. They're living in an acoustic world. They can use the sound much better because it travels a lot faster in water. I was head down, spinning a few times, making noises. I had 12, 15 animals passing by and then racing in from behind this young animal that was obviously very playful, I don't think aggressive, and he was taking a bite off my fins. It was, it was the closest encounter I've ever had with a whale, uh, almost a bit too close. <laughs> Whoa, I got a bit scared there. <laughs> There's no fear, you just enjoy the moment and absorb the energy be between you and the whale. To see these uh, majestic creatures move like a ballet in the water and just to swim alongside and under them and spin around them and, and uh, just to be part of this world uh, cannot be explained by the human language. Maybe Jacques Cousteau calls this the silent world, but I'm sure it was like a whale concert down there. Beep, beep. Peeps and ticks and noises and whistle sounds. They're really communicating. I'm sure they're gathering the herring now and trying to fish them very close to the surface. All the whales are moving in this direction now. This is our last chance today as everything is getting dark in a half an hour. The birds are circling again now. The sea eagles have moved in. This means that there's herring near the surface. You see the big dorsal fin of the males breaking the surface. Whoa, the whole group is very close now. We'll just move up a little bit further in front of the group, then we get in the water. I'll dive straight deep into the ocean to see if I can attract some attention. Killer whales always follow the herring. All year round, they migrate and follow the herring. And the herring hate the light. They do not want to be near the surface because they can get eaten, and especially up here in the Norwegian fjords. The herring do not feed in these fjords. There is no bactonic activity. That's also why the water is so clear. So they just swim deep into the fjords and hide in order just to survive. When spring comes, they will travel down south and spawn. When hunting, the killer whales send a few from their group to dive deep into the ocean. And by showing the white patches on the belly, they can scare and drive the herring to the surface. Then the whole group circle around them and blow air bubbles in the water, in order to scare a smaller school of herring away from the main group, and make spirals around the fish and push them towards the surface. From above, the seagulls are attacking. Even the sea eagles are out there chasing the herring. From below, the killer whales have a perfect perspective and they can just move in and slam the herring with the tail, either killing or stunning them, which they then eat one by one. <coughs> Diving into a ball of herring and actually swimming with the killer whales Herding the herring into this ball, it's a magnificent experience. Of course, it's a bit frightening, but it doesn't help to be afraid in the water. It doesn't give you anything positive. So it's not a matter of being fearless, being crazy or stupid. 
It's just a matter of respecting the animals and trying to be present in the water without disturbing them too much. Of course, it's a fine line. You don't want to cross that line. But you do want to get closer to the animals in order to learn more about them. It's not so much interaction, it's more action at the moment because the whales are feeding and it's a, it's a feeding frenzy down there. The trout is attacking from below, the sea eagles and the gulls from above, the killer whales from the sides and from below and we're just in the middle of all this action. It's, it's too good to be true. Wild, wild, wild experience. So we become fearless like the killer whales but not crazy. But uh, I don't know if it's craziness to be inside a ball of herring with the uh, killer whales swimming around. <laughs> My mother probably thinks so. You only live once, Steve. <laughs> but I'm a bit confused now because I'm so focused on, on having this camera framing the things. I don't know if I have seen anything. It's like my eyes are moved into the camera, so me, myself, I cannot remember having seen any orc. I'm just thinking, oh, how's the light? Where's Stig? How's the framing? Where are the orcas? So I haven't really experienced <laughs> the whole thing. It might come back to me tonight when I'm falling asleep and I'll remember everything or something like that. Sebastian! Jump! <laughs> Just checking that no whales down under the boat. <laughs> Found a good herring. Whoa, I was half a meter from the... <laughs> oh, slippery bus. Oh, I'm done. Let's take it home and eat. Whoa. I sacrificed myself for... I sacrificed myself for the sake of science. <laughs> In the middle of a huge ball of dead herring, blue. I was in the middle of a ball of dead herring. Killer whales everywhere, feeding them, sucking them in. I could have. St <laughs> I had a big killer whale, a male passing me, not slamming me by the tail, but just gently stroking my leg. He was uh, busy feeding. He didn't care about me at all. I was at the surface for 10, 15 seconds, thinking, "No, don't go down there." <laughs> But then I saw these uh, 10 or 15 dead herring and I thought, well, I have to get close to the action, so it's now or never. And actually you saw them picking them up one by one. You can see the big teeth. They have big, beautiful teeth and a wonderful smile. And all they care about is feeding. They just want to eat these big, fat herring that are wintering here in this fjord. And uh, that's obviously what they're most concerned about. The younger animals, the younger killer whales are a bit more curious. We had them come out to the boat today, they're jumping out of the water. Fantastic to experience their natural curiosity. I think we'll take this baby home and then we have dinner. What a day! I can't believe my luck. I got lots of action, but still, I didn't quite get the interaction I was hoping for. But tomorrow, I'll bring my monofin into the water. With this, I'll gain a lot more speed and I'll be able to simulate the movement of the whales much better. Tomorrow I will get even closer. On the way home to the Two Short Tourist Center, we come upon another pot of killer whales, but it's too dark to jump in. Houston, we have a problem. Sounds like there's a bit of wind today.
Today the wind is blowing extremely hard, so it's too dangerous to go out at sea. Instead, we have moved into the mountains to see the killer whales from a different perspective. What I'm standing on here is actually a stone carving from the Stone Age. We have an actual representation of a killer whale here, and we know it's a killer whale because of this huge dorsal fin, which is unique to the killer whale. Here the pectoral fin, and up here in front we have the head. A very unique thing about these stone carvings is that they're actually made in the size of the animal. I'm standing here at the head of the whale, start walking down towards the stomach, and when I come down here seven meters later, I'm standing at the tail. So here on the mountainside where I stand, it's actually carved in stone, but the killer whales were here back at the Stone Age 9,000 years ago. beautiful morning. The wind has calmed down and I've brought my secret weapon. It's a custom-made monofin. It was made for me in Russia and my idea is that I'll put this on my feet and try to swim with the whales and simulate their movements. I found out yesterday that the whales are moving incredibly fast in the water so my plan is to put this baby on my feet and get some speed. With the monofin on, I have a strong feeling that uh, the whales will see me a bit more as one of their own. You can simulate the dolphin movement and uh, you can also swim much faster because you use all muscles of the body and push all the energy into one blade instead of two blades with the bifins. So I think I can get really close to the whales with this one today. The rough and rugged nature here in northern Norway has certainly made a deep impression on me. These huge mountains that rise directly out of the sea and the birds flying around and the low uh, polar sun shining with this red light on the surface has uh, been something I've never seen before. We are unpacking the gear now. We have traveled for several hours today in the big swell. It was a beautiful morning when we woke up, sunlight and uh, no wind. It's still a beautiful day, but uh, the wind has picked up a bit. We've had to move into the western end of the West Fjord, which is where it opens up to the Atlantic Ocean, so it's a bit more rough. I still believe that the ability of a freediver can get you closer to the whales. You're moving more freely in the water and uh, you don't have any bubbles or anything else that will scare them away like scuba tanks. And I also think that when they see you in the water, when they see you with their eyes and when they see you and pick you up on their echolocation, they want to go and experience what is this in the water? What is this object that is swimming around and looking like something we have not seen before at a depth of 30 meters? It's made, it's custom made for my feet. Far away in Russia. Ah, oh, so tight. Okay. I'm waiting for you to get the camera ready. Yeah. When I put on the monofin, I could really follow these animals. I was much faster and I was much more uh, like a, a member of their family. 
I could uh, I could act more playful. I could spin around and I could slap the tail on the surface and I could try to mimic their behavior. And as in all communication, when you're copying uh, the the behavior of other animals, of course that's the best way to to uh, catch their attention. Um, so I think that uh, being able to go into the water and swim fast, slow, spin around, and just be playful and and uh, act in a curious way was the best way to actually meet these animals. It was very clear to me that the interaction does not come from the human being. We can bring all our zodiacs, we can bring all our fancy equipment, we can bring all our hydrophones, but if the whales do not want to communicate with you or do not want to have encounters, they just dive. This I saw at numerous occasions. But if they want to uh, communicate, if they want an encounter, they, cho they chose it. And uh, of course you can trick them into doing it by swimming in the water and by blowing bubbles. And I was also making all these sounds and noises and I was trying to act just uh, as a, a strange object and trying to uh, poke their curiosity. And this seemed to work quite well because I had many whales coming up to me and checking me out and I was absolutely convinced that these whales did not stop just because they saw something in the water and they didn't care, but they were genuinely interested in this object in the water and they wanted to know more about it. So this uh, meeting between man and whale was very interesting. I've had some great encounters, some of them very close. I had the privilege of hunting with the killer whales and was swimming inside the ball of herring. At one time, I was in the middle of 15 to 18 killer whales, looking around and feeling like a member of the family. I didn't get the real playful interaction that I was looking for, but my experience over the last couple of days has only fueled my belief that closer interaction is possible. It'll just take more time, more diving and more learning. I know I can strengthen my relationship with the whales. I know I can get closer.